Now in our last episode, we looked at uh, how to make this uh, white background look using lighting, and I thought we had a pretty good thing going, but alas, um, one of our kind subscribers wrote in and said, hey, you, you've got a little spot up here in the upper right-hand corner that's not totally white. And so obviously there was a little bit of a problem with my approach there. I don't think I got my lighting perfectly even. So that kind of stuff is the stuff that happens in real life. And uh, <laughs> I'm thankful for uh, being for getting the feedback and now knowing that, hey, we've got a little bit of an issue there. So there, there are a couple of things that I could have or should have done. And uh, let's talk about what some of those things are. First of all, obviously fixing the lighting while you're on the on location doing the actual shoot or in the studio doing the actual shoot is the ideal solution. Um, obviously I didn't catch that. The way I probably could have uh, more likely have caught it is that if I had used the false color setting on my uh, Ninja 2, my external recorder, I could have picked that up. If you're shooting a Canon DSLR and you're shooting with Magic Lantern, likewise there's a good chance you could use that and actually capture that. You would see that, there, that this wasn't quite as bright over here as the rest of it. And that would really kind of be the ideal. Um, so in the future, I think a lesson learned there for me is definitely use a false color and, and check things out. If you're going for that kind of perfect white background look, you really do want to make sure it's evenly lit. So that's the first thing. If that's yeah, not possible, if you don't recognize that until after the, sh after the shoot, well, that's reality and, and that sometimes happens. So let's take a quick look at using Speed Grade, which is a color grading application that comes with uh, Adobe CC. Uh, Creative Cloud, and uh, for those of you that have it, that's that's great. That's a great tool to use. If you don't have that, there is also, of course, DaVinci Resolve Lite, which is free, and we've talked about that in a few episodes ago. But in this case, let's let's just uh, look at what you would do in Adobe SpeedGrade CC. Similar principles apply in DaVinci Resolve, and we may come back at a future date and look at that in a little more detail in Resolve. So, what I would do here is all I have to do is is come up here to the File menu and direct link to Adobe SpeedGrade. It asks me if I want to save it, and I'll go ahead and say yes. And that brings us over to SpeedGrade. This new uh, workflow is really pretty tight on here. Really impressed with it. So first thing is we, we get onto our clip here, and if we come up here into the waveform monitor, this is actually an RGB, let's, let's just do a waveform here. Whoops. There we go, single waveform. You can see this the the issue that we're seeing in this upper right hand corner, which you may or not be may or may not be able to see um, just looking at it here on the screen. But if you look at the original version, actually, let me go ahead and play a clip of the original version. And if you watch up in the upper right hand corner here, you'll notice that there is a little bit of uh, slightly different color there, and that's because it's not perfectly evenly lit there. There's a little bit less light in that corner. And that's actually shown here on the waveform. If you look really closely, you can see that most of the white background here is pushed up against the top, completely blown out. Um, and you can see on the corners here, both on the right and the left, there's a, there's a little bit that uh, is not perfectly white. So the way a waveform works is this uh, bottom axis here, x-axis, uh, refers to the same uh, x-axis of your frame. So this is the left-hand side of your frame, this is the right-hand side of your frame. And then along the y-axis here, it, it represents the brightness levels, if you will, of each of the portions in your frame. So you can see here's my face represented here. You can see it's a little bit heavier in the reds. Um, and then, of course, over here on the right-hand side of the screen, there's nothing but white, and it's almost all blown out at the top except for this little corner here and the same over here. So that's how you read a waveform just in kind of rough terms. But what we can do to fix that is we could probably just pop in here into the highlights and I can push that up just a little bit. I just want to affect the highlights. I don't want to affect and I just keep an eye on my waveform until I can see there's no more little wedge there and we've taken care of that problem. So all I have to do then is I can go ahead and save this off, save this look off pop that off in here, save that look, it saves it right here. Now all I have to do is pop over to the other clips where I'm doing the same thing. Can you can see we've got that same problem here. I click on this and bam, that's gone. And just do that to the rest of the clips within my sequence here that have the same, the same thing going on. I save it, I can get out of speed grade, come right back into Premiere and that problem is solved. So you can see how uh, 
If you have something that's a relatively minor issue like that, it's not too bad to fix it with color grading. If it's a, if it's a bigger issue, like the exposure is way off or something like that, or the lighting is way, way off, you're gonna have a tougher time actually doing that using a color grading application. But for minor issues like that, you can definitely do it and there's a lesson learned. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions on how we did this here, uh, go ahead and leave those down below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.